In an unprecedented move, the Canada Revenue Agency has just dropped a financial bombshell. Every Canadian senior is about to find their bank account $4,700 richer. But what does this sudden windfall mean for the nation's elderly, the economy, and the future of social support in Canada? The announcement came on a crisp bottom morning, catching millions of Canadians off guard as they sip their morning coffee and scroll through their news feeds. The Canada Revenue Agency, typically associated with tax collection and financial oversight, had made a startling declaration. Effective immediately, all Canadian seniors would receive a direct deposit of $4,700 into their bank accounts. The news spread like wildfire across social media platforms, news outlets, and through excited phone calls between family members. For many of Canada's seniors, the announcement felt like a dream come true. After years of careful budgeting, pinching pennies, and watching the cost of living steadily rise, this unexpected influx of cash promised a temporary reprieve from financial stress. The CRA statement emphasized that this was a one-time payment designed to address the unique challenges faced by older Canadians in the wake of recent economic turbulence and inflationary pressures. As the initial shock wore off, questions began to emerge. How would this massive financial undertaking be funded? What criteria determine eligibility? And perhaps most importantly, what were the long-term implications of such a bold move by the government? The CRA was quick to provide some clarity. The payment would be available to all Canadian citizens and permanent residents aged 65 and older as of the announcement date. This age threshold aligned with the standard eligibility for Old Age Security, OAS, one of Canada's cornerstone pension programs. The agency stressed that this payment was separate from and in addition to existing benefits such as OAS and the Canada Pension Plan, CPP. Financial experts scrambled to analyze the impact of injecting billions of dollars into the economy through this targeted approach. Some praise the move as a much-needed boost for a demographic, often struggling with fixed incomes in the face of rising costs. Others express concern about the potential inflationary effects of such a large-scale cash distribution. For 72-year-old Margaret Chen in Vancouver, the news brought a mix of excitement and cautious optimism. It's a wonderful surprise, she said, her voice tinged with both joy and disbelief. But I can't help wondering if there's a catch. Margaret's reaction echoed the sentiments of many seniors across the country, grateful for the assistance but wary of unforeseen consequences. As the day progressed, stories began to emerge of how different individuals plan to use this unexpected windfall. In Halifax, 68-year-old retired fisherman Thomas McLean spoke of finally being able to repair the leaky roof that had been a source of worry for the past two winters. It's not just about the money, he explained, it's about the peace of mind it brings. In Winnipeg, 80-year-old Elaine Kowalczyk saw the payment as an opportunity to fulfill a long-held dream. I've always wanted to visit my granddaughter in Toronto, but the airfare was just too much on my pension, she shared, her eyes twinkling with anticipation. Now I can go and even treat her to a nice dinner while I'm there. These personal stories highlighted the diverse needs and aspirations of Canada's senior population. For some, the $4,700 represented essential financial relief, allowing them to address pressing concerns like home repairs, medical expenses, or outstanding debts. For others, it offered a chance to indulge in experiences or purchases that had long been out of reach. The question of funding quickly became a hot topic of debate. Opposition parties in Parliament demanded transparency, calling for a detailed explanation of how the government planned to finance this unexpected expenditure. The ruling party insisted that the payment was made possible through a combination of budget reallocations, unexpected revenue surpluses, and strategic borrowing. As political discussions intensified, social scientists and gerontologists weighed in on the potential social impacts of the payment. Dr. Emilio Rodriguez, a leading researcher in aging studies, saw both opportunities and challenges. On one hand, this could significantly improve the quality of life for many seniors, reducing stress and potentially even having positive health outcomes, she noted. But we also need to consider how this might affect family dynamics and community support systems. Dr. Rodriguez's concerns touched on a critical aspect of the debate, the role of government support versus family and community care for seniors, would this payment inadvertently reduce the could it potentially strain relationships if family members felt their financial assistance was no longer necessary or appreciated? These questions led to broader discussions about the nature of social support in an aging society. Canada, like many developed nations, has been grappling with the challenges posed by an increasingly top-heavy population pyramid. 
With people living longer and birth rates declining, the proportion of seniors in the population has been steadily growing, putting pressure on pension systems, health care, and social services. Some saw the CRA's move as a tacit acknowledgement of these demographic shifts and the need for more robust support systems for older Canadians. Advocates for seniors' rights praised the initiative as a step in the right direction, while calling for more comprehensive long-term solutions to address the ongoing challenges faced by the elderly. As the days passed, attention turned to the practical aspects of distributing such a large sum of money to millions of individuals. The CRA assured the public that the payments would be processed automatically for those who had filed recent tax returns. For seniors who hadn't filed taxes in recent years or who had concerns about their eligibility, a dedicated hotline was established to handle inquiries and assist with the process. Back in Canada, the effects of the payment began to manifest in various ways across different communities. In rural areas, where access to services can be limited and the cost of living is often lower, the $4,700 went further in addressing immediate needs. Many seniors in these regions reported using the funds to stock up on essentials, pay off outstanding bills, or invest in mobility aids that improved their quality of life. In urban centers where the cost of living tends to be higher, the impact was more varied. For some, the payment provided a temporary buffer against rising housing costs and other urban expenses. Others saw it as an opportunity to engage more fully in city life, using the funds to participate in cultural events, join fitness classes, or pursue educational opportunities. The payment also had unexpected effects on intergenerational relationships. Many adult children of seniors reported a sense of relief, knowing their parents had this additional financial cushion. Some families used the opportunity to have open discussions about money and long-term financial planning, topics that had previously been difficult to broach. However, not all reactions were positive. A minority of seniors expressed discomfort with receiving such a large sum from the government, viewing it as unnecessary or even as a form of charity. This sentiment was particularly strong among those who prided themselves on their financial independence and self-reliance. As weeks turned into months, Researchers began to gather data on the real-world impacts of the payment. Early findings suggested a general improvement in reported quality of life among seniors, with many citing reduced financial stress and increased ability to engage in social activities. Health researchers noted a potential correlation between the payment and improved mental health outcomes, though they cautioned that more long-term studies would be needed to confirm any lasting effects. The economic impact was similarly mixed. While there was a noticeable uptick in consumer spending, particularly in sectors catering to older Canadians. Some economists warned of inflationary pressures in certain markets. The housing market, for instance, saw increased activity as some seniors used the payment as a down payment for downsizing or moving to retirement communities. The political landscape continued to shift in response to the initiative. The ruling party pointed to positive feedback from seniors as validation of their decision, while opposition parties called for a more comprehensive review of the program's costs and benefits. The debate expanded to include discussions about the future of Canada's pension system and the potential for implementing a universal basic income for seniors. As the one-year anniversary of the announcement approached, the CRA released a comprehensive report on the distribution and initial impacts of the payment. The data revealed that over 99% of eligible seniors had received the funds, with the remaining cases mostly due to administrative issues that were being actively addressed. The report also highlighted some unexpected outcomes. There was a notable increase in charitable donations from seniors, suggesting that many felt empowered to give back to their communities. Additionally, there was a surge in enrollment for adult education courses, indicating that many seniors were using the funds to pursue lifelong learning goals. However, the report also acknowledged challenges. There were instances of financial abuse, where vulnerable seniors had been taken advantage of by unscrupulous individuals. This led to calls for stronger protections and financial literacy programs targeted at older Canadians. The international community continued to watch Canada's experiment with interest. Several countries had begun exploring similar programs, albeit on a smaller scale, inspired by the Canadian model. This led to increased collaboration and knowledge sharing between nations on issues related to supporting aging populations. As Canadians reflected on the year since the announcement, opinions remained divided. Many seniors expressed gratitude for the financial boost and the attention it had brought to issues facing older Canadians.
Critics, however, question the long-term sustainability of such large-scale direct payments and argue for more targeted approaches to supporting seniors in need. The debate sparked by the CRA's announcement had evolved into a broader national conversation about aging, financial security, and the social contract between generations. It challenged Canadians to think deeply about how they valued and supported their elders and what kind of society they wanted to build for future generations. Economists continue to analyze the ripple effects of the payment on various sectors of the economy. The tourism industry, for instance, reported a significant increase in bookings from senior travelers, both domestically and internationally. This boost helped revitalize many tourist-dependent communities that had been struggling in recent years. The healthcare sector also saw interesting developments, with some seniors using the funds to access preventive care services or address long-standing health issues there were indications of potential long-term savings in healthcare costs. However, the system also faced increased demand for certain services, particularly in areas related to mobility and quality of life improvements for older adults. Financial institutions reported a surge in seniors seeking advice on investment and estate planning. This led to the development of new financial products and services tailored to the needs of older Canadians, with a focus on balancing security with growth potential. The technology sector responded to the increased purchasing power of seniors by developing and marketing products specifically designed for older users. From simplified smartphones to AI-powered home assistance devices, there was a newfound focus on making technology accessible and beneficial for the elderly population. On the policy front, the payment had sparked a revaluation of existing support systems for seniors. Policymakers were exploring ways to build on the positive impacts of the one-time payment while addressing the need for sustainable long-term solutions. This included discussions about enhancing pension plans, improving access to affordable housing for seniors, and investing in age-friendly community infrastructure. The experience also highlighted the diversity within Canada's senior population. The ways in which individuals use the payment varied greatly depending on factors such as location, health status, family situation, and personal priorities. This diversity underscored the need for flexible and adaptable approaches to supporting older Canadians. As the second year since the announcement began, the conversation had matured. What started as a shocking financial announcement had evolved into a multifaceted national dialogue about aging, economics, and social values. The $4,700 payment, while significant